Our Cleveland Cavaliers taking on the Indiana Pacers. Sunday night, April the 2nd, a week from this Sunday night. At the Romo Fijo, it's Autism Acceptance Night, presented by Cleveland Clinic Children's and Culture City. Go to Cav.com for any info that you might need, tickets and all that. Two tickets here for you, Cavs Pacers on the 2nd. Good luck, car 10. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. He's been called a waste of space before, but now it's official. Alan Cox. To occupy the city. On 100.7 WMMS. Three five one nine two. want to send me a text. Next week on the show, I got a lot of tickets for shows for you. If you want to haul ass to Kentucky, uh, end of September, that's that Louder Than Life Festival. I think it's the same people that put on Sonic Temple. I do a festival called Louder Than Life, and I will have passes for you, weekend passes for that, all next week. Foo Fighters, Green Day, Tool, Godsmack, Pantera, Weezer, Limp Bizkit, Megadeth, and more. I will also get you into the advanced screening of the new... Well, it's a it's like a it's a worldwide listening party for the new Metallica album, which is called 72 Seasons. And it's going to be the night before it drops or they're putting it in cinemas every something, I don't know. If you like Metallica, I'll have those passes for you next week. Offspring have announced a Cleveland show. They're going to do uh, Blossom in August with Simple Plan and Some 41. Who's left from Some 41? I think it's just the... Brown Sound? Yeah, like the original lead singer. Oh, just Derek Wibley? Yeah. Outlaw Music Festival at Blossom. That is Willie Nelson and John Fogarty and many others. That's going to be August. I'll have those tickets for you next week. And Mudvayne have announced their first tour in about a decade. Uh, They're going to do a show at Blossom in August, and I will have those tickets for you next week. So a lot of show. Mudvayne is bringing Cold Chamber... Guar, Nonpoint, and Butcher Babies <laughs> with them. So we'll be um, uh, covering that on Two Hours to Midnight probably. have some tickets for you there too, but uh, that'll be next week on the program. If you listen to us on iHeartRadio from uh, wherever, tell me where you do that. Uh, Justin is a bureau chief in Honolulu. Holly listens in Durant, Iowa. John's up in Buffalo. Kelly's in Milwaukee. You can always leave us messages there, too. Alan and Bill, you magnificent sons of bitches. I had my dinner planned out tonight. A steak, a nice baked potato, and then I listened to the podcast from yesterday where you're talking about hot beef-injected mac and cheese. Mm-hmm. I've got a winner on my hands. Bye! Yeah, there's some food news for you. Um, from yesterday's show, that's a Bill Squire joint, the hot beef injected mac and cheese with the au jus, and he's just cramming fistfuls of meat into his mac and cheese. I wouldn't say fistfuls, it's just like a regular amount of beef. And again, I stand by it not being injected into anything, just stirred in. That's just a Breakfast Club reference, right? Where he's like, uh, you give her the hot beef, beef injection. injection. Yes, yes. Okay, I just want to make sure. Well, I, we, yeah, it was around before that, but I mean, that's um, uh, that was my takeaway. And the the way that Bill described putting this dish together was nothing short of genius in its attention to detail, because he's far too um, modest to explain this to you again, but something that we mentioned yesterday about him putting the beef into the mac and cheese. And what he does is... He breaks out his meat claws. Yes. And so he is uh, shredding this beef, and then what he does, listen closely, because, boy, it requires a lot of work, but the result is nothing short of revelatory. He threads pieces of meat into the macaroni noodles. With With a needle? With a tweezer. Wow. And then he cooks it again. Hot beef injects the au jus into the entire dish. But I mean, Let's I don't know that a, you can have your top chefs and you can have your Michelin star restaurants. I've never heard of anyone 
threading their beef into the macaroni noodles itself. It's so laborious, and yet, according to him, it's the only way to do it. Makes it taste better. And it would also keep me safe if I was on uh, the island with the restaurant from the menu. Because if they would have been like, here, why don't you make something? I would have made that. And they would have been like, this is genius. Never seen anything like this. We've never had hot beef injected mac and cheese Mm -hmm. here before. Dude. (coughs) I had the best mac and cheese I've ever had in my life in Texas. At Terry Black's Barbecue. Oh, yeah? I don't know if anybody's been there. No. Everyone I talked to was like gold staple barbecue in Austin. You have to go to Terry Black's. You have to go to Terry Black's. When I say, I'm, I mean it. I don't eat a lot of mac and cheese anymore because, you know, it doesn't sit well with me. Milk mm-hmm. racist. Uh, yes. <laughs> Milk racist. <laughs> but it was so creamy and so good. And then mixed with the brisket. So you're talking oh. about injecting hot beef into this mac and cheese. I kind of did that. Ah. Bite, a, bite a brisket, bite a mac and cheese, a little barbecue <laughs> sauce. Incredible. No, I haven't been there. It's so good. We go out to the salt lick. Uh, when we're in Austin, which is about a 30-minute drive outside the city, and it's in the middle of nowhere, but it's delicious. Old Carolina's Barbecue. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've but never the one in Austin. That. Available yeah. in your grocer's freezer. Well, because Terry Black's is kind of like a regional chain. Like, there's one in Dallas. There's one in Austin. We haven't eaten there, but I've heard, uh, like what you said, everybody goes, you got to go there. Uh, when I went up, I forgot. Trouble is, in in Texas— you can pull off the side of the road and there'll be a guy with a giant barrel right, cooker and it'll be right. the best barbecue you've ever had in your life. Well, I went and I forget that I'm in the South and I went up and I'm like ordering. You order your sides first and then you go up and they slice the meat right in front of you. And so I got brisket and then I asked for a pop and the guy started laughing. He goes, pop, where are you from? I was like, oh, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. And he goes, just for that, he gave me free burnt ends. Ooh, Ooh I know. Yeah. He threw two well, free, yeah. I know. He threw two free burnt ends. And he's I like, I'm from end. Pennsylvania. I don't ever hear anybody say pop. And I was like, all right, look at that. Just a little slip up, not calling it soda. Got me some free burnt ends. Is pop an Ohio thing? It's like a Midwest thing. Midwest thing. Definitely Michigan, like Russ Belty. Yes. Thing. Is it? Yeah. Michigan, I, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Because like I start, I grew up saying pop, even though we weren't allowed to have it. Um, but when I moved to Pennsylvania, I switched to soda. And so I think now I call it soda. I don't even think I call it pop anymore. But I couldn't recall if I had heard pop in Ohio. Yeah. Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, absolutely. Yes. I didn't know if pop was the Michigan, thing. Michigan, Ohio, Parts of Pennsylvania. I mean, when you get toward the East Coast, like, you know, Pittsburgh. Well, Michigan, Fago is just your shorthand. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> some rock and rye. But even like Kentucky, it's soda. West really? Virginia, it's soda. Yeah, it's like, it's literally like Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Ohio. And okay. Then if you get down to Georgia and Mississippi and it's stuff like Coke. that. Just Coke. Yeah. yeah. What kind of Coke do you want? Yeah, you it was just like, yeah. yeah, that's so weird to me because so they did that in Texas. Well, because they're out too. of Atlanta. So yeah. it's Coke is everything down there. I hey, did. can I have a Pepsi? Or you'll say, can I have a Coke? And they'll say, what kind? Yeah. yeah. I have a joke about a, a garage fridge, like a pop fridge. And my first night at uh, Cap City, I said a pop fridge. And like no one, I was like, oh, I'm sorry, soda. And then they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we have those here. Like, I was like, oh, my God. How they couldn't not... figure it out by context That's what clues? I said, too. I was like, you guys have to know what they're I'm like, talking about. Er? You know, don't pop? you guys have a pop fridge? What? <laughs> a soda fridge? Right. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, that thing. All right. That. Uh, the Alan Cox Show After Hours line. Uh, it's free to anyone, uh, even uh, people not named Jenna. <laughs> she is our most um, she's our most frequent user of the After Hours line. And of course, you can use it anytime you like. Uh, it is 216-986-8903. You can leave voicemails there anytime you like. But of course, Jenna calls all the time. It's time for Sweet Nothings. With Jenna from Poland. Yeah, maybe I am nothing but a retarded whore. This has been Sweet Nothings with Jenna from Poland. I hope she's doing okay. She, she's I mean, taking she, a dark turn on a couple of things. She's doing some introspective thinking. She has ups and so. downs, you know, like anybody. Well, I only ask because um, I'll play this little clip for you, too. Basically, every other voicemail I get from her is this. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh. So I don't. <laughs> okay. Wait, you're just now letting us know about those. Wait a ones. second. <laughs> well, they became so frequent that I could not ignore them any longer. For a while, I figured, okay, she's got access to this, and 
Uh, right, but it got to the point where I would come in. Sounds like she's auditioning to be on two hours until midnight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, where I would come in and there would be, let's say, 37 voicemails from the weekend. Uh, the artist, not the, you know, he loves the show too. Uh, and easily half of them are from Jenna. But in between there, because I'm always panning for gold with her, uh, a lot of those growly voicemails. <laughs> yeah, a lot of those. So I hope she's doing okay. Maybe she's constipated. Maybe she is constipated. <laughs> <laughs> Even uh, in that situation, I hope that uh, she's doing okay. Constipation is no joke. Uh, for people who, um, you know, may be on uh, painkillers or something. Uh, that is no fun. So I hope she's doing okay out there. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So these two lesbians in D.C. have a child at a private school. Sorry, a daycare center. And they're filing suit. This is a family-owned daycare center. And this is the risk of any family-owned business. A lot of people will use that in their marketing because they think that it's an inherent good. And, of course, it's not. Family-owned since, well, every family has a psycho in it. And you don't want that person in charge of anything. So this lesbian couple has, um, they have a child at this local daycare. And they got a voicemail from one of the employees of the daycare, which happens to be the daughter of the owners who left a voicemail saying that they needed to break up and they were going to hell. And of course this woman starts speaking in tongues because it's just ridiculous all the way around. And uh, so now they're trying to figure out if they have legal recourse against um, uh, these people who run this daycare. A same-sex couple tells me the director of their child's daycare, Kamisha Munford, left them haunting voicemails, even speaking in tongues. And the word of the Lord says that God wants you and your wife to split up. And I am so sorry to have to tell you this. I'll also speak in tongues. I pray in tongues. <laughs> the Gibbs family I pulling love it. their daughter out She's of like, the school. She's like, I got, I got, I got, I got. Mary likes this stuff because she I grew don't. up doing this. I got, I got, I got, I got, I got. <laughs> Leaves a voicemail. I'm so sorry to tell the two of you you need to break up. Pull and say the owners of the daycare. You're pissed. Why? To be the director. Because I've never. I've, I've been a Christian most of my life, all of my life, and I. You speak in tongues all the time. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> 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 Warberry. Uh huh. Coffin skate it. Yeah. GameStop was just like their. A scapegoat, I guess. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> okay, well, I forgot. <laughs> Why does that make you mad? Because I don't know. I feel like, you know, God hasn't touched me in that way. Where That's the part that makes you mad, not the, hey, lady who runs a daycare owned by your parents. Maybe don't leave voicemails saying we got a break. If she wasn't the owner's daughter, she would have been fired. Like, imagine you were working for a business and you called a client and did that. You'd be fired immediately. Not if the business believed that same stuff. Okay, fine. But what I'm saying is then don't, but you're still running a business. And you brought them in there. You allowed them to be there. Right. So that's something you could say. Even if like an atheist employee called a religious client and mocked them, you'd have to fire them immediately because they're employed, you know. So I guess because apparently their response in the daycare was, um... We've looked into it, and which it means we've looked into our daughter's voicemail. We looked into it, and we fixed it, and don't worry about it. Like, that's that, that's their reaction to the whole thing. I'm so sorry to have to tell you that you have to break up as a lesbian couple. That's crazy. Actors' parents need to take action. When we stopped by the daycare in Prince George's County Wednesday, the owner of Rising Generation said they'd speak to us today. I, I can't. We want to talk to you, but I can't speak to you right now. I have to speak with the executive. I'll tell you what, if you want to go full tilt boogie on this, what you do is, when the litigation begins and you're the daycare, what you do is you find a lawyer who speaks in tongues. There it is. Oh, Your Honor. Yeah. <laughs> And then it really drives home the point. Hold on. 
I love this lady. Yay, my son, dala di di di, I see ko shantala lo 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 si. Yay, my son, dala di di di, I see ko shantaya. Thank you, Jesus. There you go. That was a woman that wanted to be the mayor of Toledo, Ohio, many years ago. Koshantaya. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> you know what it means. Koshantaya? Listen to your heart. You know oh, what yeah? Is that That's what it what is? That's it means. You have to you translate it through your heart. Ah. So it doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's just what your doesn't brain... It doesn't mean anything to you. It's the Holy Ghost talking to God through you. Well, I mean, it doesn't mean, I mean, if he's talking through you, he would put it in a language that other no. people could understand. <clears throat> There's no reason for that. Of course not there for is. Other people that You're trying understand. to proselytize. No, You're trying to it's get not other... for other people to understand. No, That's stop. between the Holy Ghost and Jesus Christ. Well, then why not keep it in your brain? Because it has to come out your mouth. But in a way that other people can't, will it's mock you. It's not for other people. Who's it for? It's for God. Then keep it in your brain. It you don't think God it has knows to what's... come out. It has to be vocalized. God knows why? what's in your brain because the Holy why? Ghost and God don't speak the same language. Wait, why wouldn't they speak the same language? <laughs> I don't know. I just know that they don't, and they need us as a channel to get the. I thought we needed them. Well, it's a it's a circle. Everybody needs everybody. Hmm. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Oh, right. now I get it. Oh, now I get it. My son, dala di di di, I see ko shantala lo 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 si. Yay, my son, dala di 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 di, I see ko shantaya. Thank you, Jesus. So why is the last part in English? That's her. Oh, that's her the coming, coming out her. of her fugue state. Okay, yes. but wait. So when she's speaking, that's the Holy Ghost mm-hmm. in tongues. Yes. That's the Holy Ghost. It's not you. What's You're the, not saying that. And what's the point of that? It's 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 like an anointment. So it's, it's like... It's an annoyed... Mint. <laughs> sure. An annoyed mint, yes. <laughs> saying the employee had been reprimanded. Thursday, they sent a letter home to parents saying the comments made by the director were offensive and inappropriate. However, we do know the director was at work today. We called to ask the daycare what actions were taken specifically against the employee, and Kamisha Munford herself answered the phone. And when I started asking her questions... Okay, you can't answer... Oh, she hung up. She hung up on me. Anyway. Um, Got to coach and tie ya. <laughs> Listen, man, if you're not going to coach and tie ya, <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Talk to you later. Coach and tie one on. It's pretty wild. Uh, but again, it all goes back to uh, cast a skeptical eye at family-owned businesses because you never know what's lurking within. I got a break. If you want to send a text, 35192.